Hi you guys, today I'm going to talk to you about limiting reactants and excess reactants. So make sure that you have your notes. Um, you will need your periodic table, your solubility chart, and a highlighter and a pencil to write with. Okay? Alright, let's get going. So we're going to talk about limiting reactants and they're the more advanced stoichiometry problems that we do uh, um, in class but it is using the um, using stoichiometry to solve limiting reactants problems okay so let's say that i have eight car bodies here and each car body needs four tires in order for this car to work so uh, and i've got 48 tires here so if i so how many tires do i really need so if each car needs four tires then for eight times four would give me 32 tires so times four, this would give me 32. So, but I've got 48. So that means I can definitely make my eight cars out of the 48 tires. But from this 48 tires, 32 minus 48 would give me a total of 16 excess tires. Okay. So in this case, in this problem, the one factor de that determines how many cars I'm going to be able to make is this car bodies right here. So this would be my limiting reactant because this determines how much of how many cars will be made or what my final total for my product will be. On the other hand, tires is your excess reactant because you have too much of it. You have 48, you have about 16 more tires than you really need. So this is the stuff that's going to be left over um, sitting in the garage somewhere, the 16 extra tires. So this is your excess. So if you look at it, a limiting reactant is, and we call it LR, is the reactant that is used up first and it also limits the production of the product. Just like this, this is the eight car bodies are used up first, and it also limits the production. If you don't have, you don't, you only have eight car bodies. Um, therefore, you can only make eight cars. You, if you had more than eight car bodies, then you could use more tires. But since you don't, this is the one that deter that limits the production of our reaction. On the other hand, the um, oh, one more thing, one more thing. And um, once your um, limiting reactant is used up, you have no more product can be formed. Can be formed. Okay. So okay. Now let's talk about excess reactant, which is ER. This is the reactant that is left over in the reaction, and that would be our tire. Our tires are the ones that are left over. Okay. So a very simple, easy concept. But let's put it to math which is what we do because remember, limiting reactants are the adma more advanced stoichiometry problems, okay? So right here, what is the theoretical yield of aluminum oxide produced when 12 grams of aluminum metal is burned with 13 grams of oxygen gas? So first of all, remember that theoretical yield of aluminum oxide, theoretical yield actually means grams, okay? But also, this is what you are trying to find. You're trying to find the grams of aluminum oxide in this case. You're also told that you have 12 grams of aluminum. This is the aluminum oxide is produced when you have 12 grams of aluminum and 13 grams of the oxygen. So that's also given to us. So notice in this problem, we have two givens in here. So let's write our equation out. So our equation is aluminum which is a solid plus oxygen gas will produce aluminum oxide. And of course, don't forget to balance this. So we have four, three, and then two. Okay, so we are balanced here and we're gonna write our given. This is 12 grams, 13 grams, and we are trying to find out how many grams of aluminum, of aluminum oxide are going to be produced in this case, okay? First of all, you guys, you know that this is a limiting reactant problem um, just by reading the question. 
The reason why you do know that is because your reactants, both reactants, or sometimes you have more than two, but all something, information about all the reactants will be given, some kind of quant quantity, whether it's grams or whether it's small, some kind of quantity will be given for all of the reactants, okay? Or for at least two of the reactants that you need to compare. No other problem in stoichiometry um, gives you both or all of, um, gives you both or all quantities of all of the reactants, okay? So the question is, which one of these is going to be the limiting reactant? And so you can do it two ways. Limiting reactant, um, so basically what you want to do is right now it's apples and oranges, trying to figure out how much of this is going to be produced. You want both of these to be in the same compound so that you can figure out how much of this is going to be produced. So we're going to do it a couple of ways. We're going to do aluminum first, okay? Let me figure out aluminum first. And so that is, we're going to start off with 12 grams. And in this case, I'm going to um, convert this from grams to moles. Okay? Grams to moles. So I'm going to start off with aluminum. So I've got 12 grams of aluminum. And I'm going to convert that into moles. So looking at your periodic table, it's 26.98 grams of aluminum is equal to one mole of aluminum. And then I have here, according to my equation, I have four moles of aluminum to every two moles of aluminum oxide. Okay, so I went from grams of my given to the moles of what I want to find. And I can plug that into my calculator and I get a number, 12. So here's my calculator, I'm gonna plug it in. 12 divided by 26.98 times two divided by four. And I get this number right here. So I'm gonna write down 0.22 moles of aluminum oxide. Okay. Now, since I have this right here, I could, uh, um, and I'm going to, this is the moles of aluminum oxide, so let's go ahead and find out for our oxygen. Right here, um, we're given 13 grams, 13 grams of oxygen. And oxygen, don't forget, it is 32 grams because it is O2. So every mole of oxygen in here, and this is three to two. So three moles of oxygen to every two moles of aluminum oxide, okay? And of course, we want to cancel everything out and put it into our calculator. And when we do, we get 13 divided by 32 times two divided by three. So that would be 0 0.027 moles of aluminum oxide. Okay, so we have this. Looking at these two numbers, you can see that the aluminum will produce the least amount of aluminum oxide. So this will be our limiting reactant. Okay, this will be our limiting reactant. And since this does produce a larger amount of aluminum oxide, this will be our excess, okay? So we have from here figured out which ones are limiting, which ones are excess. Clearly, in order to figure out the theoretical yield of aluminum oxide, we are going to use the limiting reactant um, to figure out how much is actually produced. So we don't even have to worry about oxygen in this case. We can just go straight to aluminum. And remember, theoretical yield is in grams. So now that we have done this, we can actually convert this into mole, um, into grams or cells. So one mole of aluminum to oxide. And we want to put this here. I always want to see on your paper, somewhere I want to see information you actually converting your molar masses, converting that. So use your periodic table um, and have it somewhere on your paper because I always want to see 
how you did your work. So it's 2 times 26.98 plus 3 times 16, and that is going to give me a number. So 2 times 26.98 plus 3 times 16, close my parentheses, 101.96 grams per mole. Okay, so you want to give me that unit. So over here I'm going to write 101.96 um, grams of aluminum oxide. Because it's grams per mole, so grams is here and moles is right here. So now I can figure out exactly the amount that was produced. So 0.22 divided by um, no, times 101.96. So I actually have 22.43 grams of aluminum oxide that is produced. So this tells me how many grams of aluminum oxide is actually produced in my reaction. So in this reaction, uh, whenever I'm given 12 grams of aluminum and 13 grams of oxygen, I will produce 22.43 grams of aluminum oxide. Okay, so that's a great way of doing it. But I don't have to, you know, I've said over here that there are two ways of doing it. So I converted um, both of my reactants, I was given gra um, grams of it, and I converted it to moles right here to figure out which one was the limiting reactant, okay? And we found out that it was actually this one that was the limiting reactant. But I can solve it another way. Instead, what I could do is I can solve it, I'm converting both grams to grams on here, okay? I'm going to use another sheet of paper and just show you real quick, okay? I've got my equation over here, and I am going to convert this time. I'm going to convert from grams to grams. So this will be the grams of what I'm given, and I'm going to find the grams of what I want to find. So let's do that for aluminum first, okay? I'm given 12 grams of aluminum. And I have 26.98 grams of aluminum to one mole of aluminum. And I'm going to do the exact same thing, and it's go, um, I'm using my mole-to-mole -mole ratio. So four moles of aluminum to every two moles of aluminum that I have. Okay, But this time, since I'm going to grams, I'm going to take it one step further, and I'm just going to continue on what I did over here, so I'm just going to continue it. Okay, so now it's one mole of, oops, and I'm going to write here, you guys, I didn't write this, but this is aluminum oxide right here, okay? So this is one mole of aluminum oxide that I have over 101.96 grams of aluminum oxide that I have. So cancel moles, moles, and grams, okay? And that should give me since this is the exact same problem as what you did earlier right here, it should, when you plug it into your calculator, you should get this value. So I'm going to get 22.43 grams of aluminum oxide, okay? And this is the amount that's produced for aluminum, okay? So if I'm using 12 grams of aluminum, I will produce 22.43 grams of aluminum oxide. Well, we want to find out if oxygen is a limiting reagent. So it could be reagent or reactant, doesn't really make a difference. I'm going to do grams to grams right here again. So I'm given 13 grams of oxygen, okay? And this is 32 grams of oxygen to every one mole of oxygen. And then I have three moles of oxygen to every two moles of aluminum oxide, okay? Now I'm going to convert this into, sorry, I'm going to convert this aluminum oxide into grams because I'm doing a gram to gram conversion. So it's one mole of aluminum oxide to 101.96 grams of aluminum. And when I plug this into my calculator, so I have 13, I'm going to plug it in, okay, I'll just do it down here, just know that I'm doing it, um, 13 divided by 32 
times 2 divided by 3 times 101.96. I get 27.61 grams of aluminum oxide. So with oxygen, 13 grams of oxygen, this is how many grams of aluminum oxide is produced. So clearly, this is a bigger number than this. So if we want to convert from grams to grams, again, using this method, aluminum will still come out to be the limiting reactant. So our limiting reactant will always be aluminum, despite whether we convert it from grams to grams of the substance or we go from gram to mole of our product. The point is, is that you've got to, when we were converting from um, either moles or grams, either one, one, either one works, but we started off with apples and oranges, but then at the end, in order to compare, we looked at the same compound that's produced. So since we looked at how much aluminum oxide each one's going to produce, now we can compare between the two numbers and say, aha, it's the aluminum that's going to produce the least amount of aluminum oxide where the oxygen is going to produce just a little bit more, so it's our excess reactants, okay? And the same can be true, it said, it doesn't make a difference whether I convert it from moles to grams to moles, but here I've converted from grams to grams. Again, we convert the least amount of aluminum oxide. Between oxygen, between aluminum and oxygen, we produced 22.43 grams of aluminum oxide through aluminum and 27.61 grams of aluminum oxide through oxygen. Clearly, this is producing the least amount. It's our limiting reactant. So aluminum would be our limiting reactant and oxygen would be our excess reactant. Reactant means which one of these reactants is the limiting and, and the other one being the excess, okay? The reason why that's so important to know which one's the limiting, which one's the rea excess reactant, is because if you are actually trying to produce, if you are actually trying to um, make, make a certain amount of the compound, then you want to make sure that you have this much of the limiting reactant. At least um, you have enough of your reactants to produce that product that you want to produce. So, um, you know, doing a little bit of math ahead of time and saying, oh, well, this is how much I have of my reactants, so I will produce this much of my product. It's a good thing to know because that way you know exactly how much of the product you are forming from the amount of your reactants, okay? And with all of that being said, um, if you want to produce more of the product, then clearly you would need more of the reactant. So um, depending, uh, that can give you a lot more information. If you want to produce more product, then go and get more reactant to cause the reaction to occur, to produce the amount that you want. Okay? All right. Hope this helped you. Bye.